What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of BS for Build. In this episode, we're going to be installing some awesome accessories. We're going to do remote controlled LED light bars on the front and back. We're going to be doing a step up step on the little rocker bar guide thing. I should learn the name to that. We're going to get the spare tire on the back and a new stereo and maybe some other stuff if I can find some other stuff to do. We're accessorizing the FJ in this episode. Stay tuned. All right guys, I'm gonna be doing things a little bit different than normal in this one because my girlfriend Chelsea has been out of town for almost a week and I told her I set a goal for myself that I wanted to have the FJ looking a totally different color by the time she came back and I really wanna surprise her and pick her up from the airport in this thing. So, what we're gonna do is the stuff to get that to happen, which is reassemble the car, get all the masking off, reassemble the car and get it out on the street. All right, it is night now and the car is totally wrapped up. We're on our way to the airport. The only problem is, is I'm really late. So we've got to try and make it before she lands or else it's a pretty terrible surprise to show up late. All right, made it in time for a little walk around. So this is what it looks like under a little bit different lighting. It seems like the animal's paw prints have gotten on the hood a little bit, but that's all good. Looks mean. I really do dig the look of it. It's looking good. Let's go get Chelsea and see how she likes it. Ta da! You like it? Yeah. Want to touch it? Yeah. It's textured. It looks so different. It looks a lot different, huh? Yeah. The cats in the neighborhood already got their paws on it. <laughs> Doesn't it look so much different? You like it? I do. Looks more rugged. Does it look like an adventure vehicle now? Yes. Yeah. It's like a big gun and we it. Yeah. All right, got the girl on time. No problems there, she likes the car, that's a good thing. So it's a wrap for the night and tomorrow we start on accessorize. All right, back in the shop and it's time to accessorize. First thing that I wanna start by doing is adding a step. After I lifted up this car, it's a little bit of uh, too high of a hop to get into the car. I would like to have a step. This is a little well done step I found on e uh, eBay, I think. And uh, I've tested out where I want it. It's somewhere around here. So what I'm gonna do is throw a leveler on this, uh, get it nice and straight, tack it on there where I want it, test it out, and then do a full weld on it. Uh, to get it on there and then paint it to match this. And no, the irony is not lost on me that the stuff that's gonna get really hit hard a lot is this piece and this piece and we didn't cover it in truck bed liner and then the stuff that's not gonna get hit a lot is covered in truck bed liner. The irony is not lost on me on that, but sometimes, you know, aesthetics are important. There we have the step installed. Paint is still drying, so it's a little bit of a different color, but that's it. And now you may be thinking, Chris, what about your passengers? They're gonna need a step too. At 20 bucks a step, I don't care about them. That they can work, they can hop, they can hop. I will step gracefully. Next thing we gotta do is give this beast an oil change. I haven't changed the oil since one, three, four, five, seven, five. We're gonna take these numbers off now that I've painted it. I leave the numbers on to basically shame myself into painting the cars. That's why I do that. So anyways, we've driven this car about 10,000 miles. It definitely needs an oil change. So let's change it up.
Oil change is done. Only one surprise was that the uh, oil plug on the bottom has a gasket for it. Mine was completely toast, so I had to run down to the dealership and grab a new gasket. Other than that, uh, good high mileage oil change. Next thing that we're gonna do is move on to the headlights. You can see they're a little tired out. They got a little bit of hazing, a little bit too much fog, um, and they don't, they don't look very nice anymore. And we're gonna go ahead and do a restoration on these. Uh, Chris Fix has a great video out there on headlight restoration if you guys wanna see it. We're gonna be following that same method. You start with a low grit sandpaper, sand them up, work your way up to a very, very high grit sandpaper, like a 3000 or a 6000, and then you polish, and then you spray them with clear coat. And now we have two crystal clear headlights. That's a good little restoration if you got a couple hours, good time. Next thing we gotta do is fix paint. No way, Chris messed up another paint job? Who would have thought it's possible? Uh, so here's what happened. This side of the truck was the side that was facing the other way before. Didn't have very good lighting, is gonna be my excuse. And I didn't see that I painted some spots too thin. You can see right here, the blue is showing through. That's, that's dust. But I could, if I got up real close, I could show you, you can kind of see right here, there's a little bit of blue showing through. Um, and that's because I didn't spray it on thick enough, just because I could not see what I was doing well enough. So my advice to you guys, if you're doing this at home, just do it outside. Do it outside in the bright sunlight. You'll get better, you'll, you'll have better lighting so you don't make the same mistake that I did. But luckily we are in what's called a respray window or an additional spray window. Most, most different industrial paints have this where you can add paint on, on, on top of it and it will stick. If you were like a week later, you'd be in trouble, but we're not. So we are inside that window. We're gonna have to scuff it up and paint prep it, but that's okay. So the parts that are screwed up are some on that backside there, all around there and the hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape off all the glass and all the other stuff that we absolutely cannot get spray on. Uh, basically paint prep uh, those sections for the paint repair. Now that we are masked up, you guys can kind of see the areas that we're going to be painting. It's going to be the hood, we're going to respray the whole hood, and we're going to be painting a lot of this side panel here. The blue piece is a taper to kind of guide my eye to the places that were missed earlier. Once you get up close, it's extremely hard to see the spots that are missed. You have to step back uh, much further. So I'll be doing that as I'm painting, I'll be taking a step back. To prepare the surface to spray more onto it, um, what we got to do is we're going to need to clean it with soap and water, get all the dirt out of it. Then we're going to sand with a Scotch-Brite pad. That will scuff up the surface to help the adhesion. And then we're going to use a prepping material, a de-wax and degreaser, to clean up the whole side panel. And then we'll be ready to spray. All right, that is a wrap on the respray. Let's see how it looks tomorrow. Side note, the ride home today. Oh yeah, oh yeah, apocalypse time. All right, it's the next day, so let's go ahead and peel everything off and see how it looks. All right, she's looking great. I'm so glad I came back in and did that. Um, the big thing that I was worried about is the parts that we repainted would look different than the parts that we just painted, but you can see like there's no difference between the hood and the fender, which fender's old paint, hood is new paint. It all looks great. Came out great. I'm really, really glad that I went back and did this. Uh, we got a little bit of overspray on that back window. I came back with a razor blade, just took it off the window, and it's all good to go. All right, let's see what's next. Next up on the agenda, we're gonna be installing our light bars. We got two of these light bars that were provided to us by Rough Country. If you guys don't remember, Rough Country also hooked us up with the winch that we have in that front bumper and the three inch lift kit that we've got installed. We installed both of those on previous episodes. Check them out if you haven't already. So huge thanks goes out to Rough Country for these LED light bars. I'll put a link to their uh, website in the description. You guys go check it out. They're an awesome source for all sorts of four x four off-roading goodness you'll appreciate it. And I appreciate them hooking us up with all these accessories for the build. Definitely wouldn't be the same without it. So the idea is that we're gonna do one on the front and one on, on the back. 
Front's more for driving around, back is more for like camping time and stuff like that. And I got a pretty trick way that we're gonna wire them in and have them on a remote as well. But we're gonna do that in the next episode because uh, as always, I'm running out of time. So in this episode, we're gonna try and figure out how to mount them on the car with drilling as few holes as possible into the FJ roof because, um, you know, rain and stuff. So uh, to do that, I think I'm gonna use the, uh, what's on the ground in front of me is the roof rack. I'm gonna use that as kind of a different, like a mounting area and stuff like that for these light bars. I think is a good way to go about it. So to do that and mock everything up and see where we wanna place everything, we're gonna to need to pull the truck back out into the driveway, test fit the roof rack back on and test fit our light bars onto there and then we'll fabricate some brackets. Okay, we got the front light bar on. This was a really, really easy way to do it on this one. Uh, so we, we mounted it to the roof rack. That's how I mocked it up on the car. I like the look, I like the placement. And then um, and then it comes with these brackets right here. And there was already a hole in the roof rack right here. So then I just drilled a hole out through the back. We shoved a bolt and a nut through there. And then up here, I drilled an extra hole to run the wiring through the tubing of the uh, roof rack. So it goes through the tubing, down through the footprint. And then we're gonna drill a hole inside the roof of the car, right in between the footprint here for this and that's where we'll run our wire into the car. This light bar is adjustable by loosening up those screws right there. And uh, once we get it on the car, everything will get like fully tightened down right now. It's just kind of test fit. So the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is move on to the back here where we're probably gonna have to build a bracket. In the back, I like the look of it mounted basically in between these two bars, those two bars. I like when it's kind of centered in there. That'll get it up high enough where we can kind of tilt it down or tilt it backwards if we want to. I think for camping, the being able to tilt it um, far away is going to be important. So down or far away is going to be uh, pretty important to have all that lighting. So that's it. We got to probably build some brackets and mount up this back one. Roof rack is so lit. Get it? Lit? Ah, okay. We built two brackets here on the back side that mount up this, uh, this light bar nice and hardcore. Um, they are pretty uh, geometrical, which I'm very happy about. And uh, they are at an upward angle. That way I can tilt the light down really far if I want to have it facing down towards the ground behind the truck. That'll be perfect. Uh, I got one more hole to drill in this thing where we're going to go ahead and run the wire for the... Um, uh, the light and I think I'm gonna drill it in the side here that way rainwater won't be tempted to go down there with gravity if it's in the side there it'll have less of a chance to get in there and then we'll put it through the foot pad same way we did on the other one on the front and I'm good I'm glad that I looked at this right now we're gonna need to flip this light around actually it's we're gonna take the light unscrew it they're, they're exactly the same side to side so we'll flip it around so the cable actually comes out out here we're gonna drill the hole over here that way they're both on the same side of the car that would have been a huge mistake so I'm glad I, I noticed that um, so we'll go ahead and drill that hole run that wire flip the light around um, and then we will disassemble everything and paint it up All right, the rack and the rack inserts are all painted up. Uh, the rack turned out really, really nice. Um, I'm very happy about the way that that painted up. The the inserts, the slots, the slats that go across the middle, they were pretty in pretty bad shape already. So they, they look a little bit better, but they don't look they don't look perfect. The plastic is really yeah, it doesn't look super uniform, but that's all right. It's par for the course. It's something that's really high up on the car, so I'm not too worried about it. So that's awesome. We will go ahead and install that other light once this dries and then get the wiring on and then get it on the car. Uh, but while this dries, let's jump inside the FJ and look at our new stereo. Here's all right, inside the FJ here is our old uh, head unit. This is an Android powered um, uh, head unit that we have. The sound is okay that comes out of it, but the operating system, the software, has some things that I would like to ha see added that I'm hoping this new one will have. But also, this one has some quality issues. It will just go off on its own once in a while and start hitting buttons that I'm not controlling on the screen. So 
it'll just go crazy on you. So you could be on the phone and it'll just start hitting numbers or other things. So obviously there's some quality issues there. Uh, so this is the new one that we have. It's provided to us by this uh, company called Cycane. Um, I will put a link in the description to their website and they sell a lot of these Android powered uh, units, um, Android operating system head units. Uh, and I don't know how the how it will be, so check in the description from this. If you watch it, you know, two, three weeks, four weeks, couple, four months after, um, I post this video, I'll put in the description, I'll update how the head unit's going, if it's still reliable, if it's still running well, and all that good stuff. But for now, let's go ahead and install it. Well, we were off to a good start. A great start, you could even call it. And then all hell broke loose. We installed this once and we were able to power it on then after the next time I went to power it on, it never worked again. And it started screwing up my car. Uh, and uh, after hours and hours of figuring out what was going on and diagnosing, I found out that this system has a grounded circuit in it. So once we sent power through the back there, it fried one of the circuit boards and it now has a grounded circuit, meaning the power wire that runs in is also connected to the ground. So then anytime you plug in this stereo on or off, unpowered or powered, it will blow the fuse in the car from my power wire. So these are this is my stereo power wire right here. There's an accessory wire right here. The accessory runs to the fuse box under the dash. The power runs to the fuse box under the hood and it will blow one or both of those anytime you plug in the stereo. So the stereo turned on once and then died forever and then now kills my car when I plug it back in. So no link in the description to this one. You don't need to check back in three months to see if it works. It died after one use. So we're going back to the old one, uh, which means I need to uh, redo the wiring harness and um, plug the old one back in. A big thing that is worrying me too is that my airbag light uh, went off when I had all this stuff disconnected. I don't know if that's because that there is an airbag light set up there that tells you about your passenger airbag and stuff. I don't know if the airbag system stops working if you have that plugged in or if we broke that part of the car's electrical as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the stereo reinstalled first and then we'll see if we need to continue troubleshooting. So we're going back to the old stereo. All right, we've got the old stereo installed and working nicely, and you can see that our airbag light is off. It would normally be right about there. That was indeed because I unplugged this front dash piece and pulled it off. So FJ owners, if you're fiddling around in this area and then later on you find out that you don't have uh, airbags anymore, that's your source. So the next thing we're gonna do is gonna be kind of fun. Uh, moving up here, so you can see there's some unpainted area here where the roof racks mount in, and that's where we're gonna run our wire through. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably try and drill a hole right through there. And the roof rack foot sits on here, and the wire goes down through the middle of the foot and into the car there, where we're gonna feed them through in my dirty headliner. We're gonna feed them through under the headliner and into the A-pillar here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get up here on the front and on the back side and uh, start drilling, I guess. Okay, I've decided to go a little bit more in depth on this. I'm gonna stay at kind of a high level though. So basically you take off all the paneling and the sun visor and things that go in around that, that attach the headliner to your roof, going all the way back. And then you're gonna see that under here there is just, uh, I was checking for wires and other stuff before I went ahead and drilled and we're all good. There's just this piece of plastic that we could either drill through or remove. And then in the back, there is a whole lot of nothing. So uh, I even peeked under the headliner till I could see the light through the bolts, the bolt holes that are there for the roof rack already and we're all good there. So now I'm actually gonna go ahead and hop on top and drill the holes through, uh, place the roof rack on top and run the wires down. At that point, I'm gonna run the wire from the back uh, under the headliner um, up here all the way to the front where I will meet up with the other wire which will run down the A-pillar into here and then we can go into the engine bay. I drilled a couple holes, ran the wires down that came through the post and bolted up the rest of the roof rack and there we are. Looks great. I'm happy with the angle that these came out at too. They're gonna be very functional. Um, I like how that's adjustable so we can swivel that down if we need to swivel it down to point like towards the ground at the back of the truck. So that's awesome. Now if I open you up into the back here, you're gonna see that 
right here that wire runs down and then up there the other wire runs down. What we're going to do is we're going to take this wire, uh, connect it to a much longer, very heavy gauge wire, and then run it along the head headliner, connect it to that other one, and then we're going to run it down the A-pillar. Okay, the wiring's done. There's really nothing to show you. It runs inside of this panel all the way down there, through the A-pillar, then down into there where it runs through, into under the hood, and here's our our wires. So there's two dedicated wires for each one because they're pretty high gauge. Um, and uh, there's a lot of extra slack because we're going to be wiring these to a dedicated battery later on. But for right now, just for a test, I'm going to go ahead and bundle them up, tidy them up, and then I'll connect them to the car's battery so we can see what they look like when they're on. All right, there we go. We got the light bars installed. They're hardwired in right now. They're not on the switch. We'll do that in the next episode, but look at that. It's awesome. So bright, even in the full daylight. And I like how they're very directional. So it's not blinding when you're not getting it uh, pointed at you. That's really, really cool. Let's go over to the back side. And then again, from the side, not a big deal. And then you get in the tar target zone and whoo, damn. Like I said, right now, these are just hardwired into the battery. In the next episode, we're gonna go ahead and mount a secondary battery that's chained to this battery that we can do a disconnect so we don't drain our car's main battery. We're gonna wire the lights up to that and put them on a remote. It's gonna be awesome. All right, and with that, that is gonna be a wrap on this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're gonna install that secondary battery system uh, with a cutoff switch and some remote controls for the lights. It's gonna be really awesome. And then in the one after that, we're gonna install sleeping quarters in the back of the FJ. So some really cool stuff coming up in the next week. Keep an eye out for that. If you like Beast for Build and you want to help out and support, head over to beastforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop and pick up anything there. All the merchandise there goes directly towards supporting these builds. So thank you guys all so much that have done that already. Another way that you can help support is by supporting the people that support us like Rough Country. They gave us that winch and the two light bars that we installed today and the uh, three inch lift kit for the build. So big thanks to Rough Country. There's a link in the description. If you want to find Beast for Build in more places, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, we're streaming live on Twitch. Um, BS for Build on all those places. And I promise this week, coming up soon, we are gonna do the 3D rendering of the Aston Martin. I've been a little bit behind, a little bit busy. I don't know if you guys noticed, but this one took a lot of time to actually do. So thanks for being patient, guys. I do appreciate it. I will see you guys soon. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace!